Why do we think we can outrun these things? These things being the things we're supposed to do, the things we should be doing but aren't doing, the things we're procrastinating, neglecting, shoving under the carpet. I mean, every day we exist, every day you exist, every day I exist, every day we exist. The mathematical likelihood of that sweet existence of ours ending increases. I'm pretty sure that's basic math, pretty sure, probably. But like that character in a bad zombie movie that has a bite mark on his forearm that he's not showing anyone. At the end of every scene, he takes a look at the bite mark and knows what's inevitably gonna happen to him. And then when the inevitable arrives and it's the climax of the movie and the zombification process has completely consumed him, the protagonist has to kill him, but the protagonist can't kill him because he's Gary and he's my oldest friend. I can't kill Gary. And then the guy behind the protagonist shoots Gary instead and Gary's dead. Why do we feel the need to be him, to be Gary? Why is it so easy to shove things under the carpet, to prolong the inevitable, to to procrastinate. Why is it so easy to procrastinate? What's that one thing you're putting off? That one thing you're neglecting, like the black mold that's growing under the kitchen sink. That one thing that always seems to motivate you to read a book instead or make a salad instead or film a video instead. Do you need to tell someone something they should have been told a good while ago? Do you need to finally man up and show your doctor that lump that's been growing on your balls? Do you need to tell her you still love her? Do you need to quit your job? Stop drinking? Change the battery in your smoke alarm? Move to Geneva, confess your sins, start drinking? What is it? There's something. Think. Whatever it is, whatever your thing is, write it down. Make it real. Then eat the paper or burn the paper. I don't care what you do with the paper, just write it down and make it real. Reject the warm and welcoming comfort of cowardice. Seneca said, you're living as if you're destined to live forever. Your own frailty never occurs to you. You don't notice how much time has passed, but squander it as though you had a full and overflowing supply. You act like mortals in all that you fear and immortals in all that you desire. The longer I forfeit my conscious energy, but more importantly, subconscious energy to all these things that I'm procrastinating, the deeper the roots beneath my feet bury themselves into the floor. Listen, just listen. Let me tell you the story about this awful guy named Aga Muhammad Khan Qajar, a man for whom Benjamin Franklin's sage advice of don't put off till tomorrow what you could do today might have been useful. He was once the king of Iran and the founder of the Qajar dynasty. I won't get into why, but needless to say, he wasn't a particularly chill dude. One night in the city of Shusha, which funnily enough translates to glass, funny because metaphors and all, a quarrel arose between two of the king's servants. They raised their voices to such a pitch that the king became furious and immediately ordered both of them executed. However, considering it was Friday, the Islamic holy day, the king chose to postpone the executions till tomorrow and ordered both of them back to their duties as normal. From experience, the two servants knew the king wasn't one to break a promise and tomorrow would indeed be their final day. Having no hope, they both turned to boldness, from quarrelling over menial day-to-day -day tasks in the royal pavilion to a secret back alley rendezvous. The two servants, once vocal jousting partners, now shook hands. An alliance was formed. In a way, our being is essentially an amalgamation of all we've ever said and all we've ever done since that fateful spring morning we were ripped out of our mothers. However, I think more importantly than that, our being is a synthesis of our reactions to obligation. I mean obligation in the way that something, some matter at hand, requires action, morally requires action. Duty, you could call it, from the menial to the inordinate. As with most everything, there's always a window of opportunity for said action, a window that will close after a given amount of time. You want to ask that blonde of the Pisces necklace for a number? Four minutes before she leaves. You want to turn that crazy night out into a short story? Eleven months before you forget the minute details that would make it a good one. You want to cross the street before that school bus blazes by? 3.7 seconds. You want to do the right thing? 88 days. You want to subscribe to this YouTube channel? Four minutes before it's too late. I think the biggest tragedy in all this is the fact that most of these time frames are impossible to guess. You won't know it's too late until, well, until it's too late. 
In the late 1990s, the great American filmmaker Stanley Kubrick received a fan letter from the great Japanese filmmaker Akira Kurosawa, which to put into layman's terms would be like the Pope receiving a fan letter from none other than Jesus himself. Needless to say, that letter meant more to Kubrick than any Oscar would, and he agonized over how to reply. He wrote innumerable drafts, but just couldn't get it right. Weeks went by, still no response. Then months, still agonizing. Then he had enough. He couldn't not send back a reply to Jesus of all people, but it was too late. Just before the letter was to be sent, Akira Kurosawa passed away at the age of 88. He never received a response. I love you, Miguel. I love you too, my creme brulee. Now let me crack your top and taste your sweet puddings. There's this strange yet beautifully symbiotic relationship that exists between the window of opportunity before it's too late to do something and the growth of anxious dread. As the window gets closer to shutting, the anxious dread grows. If that window closes, I mean really truly closes, nail in the coffin type closes, then a piece of you gets buried with it. The more of these windows you allow shut, the more of your life you'll abandon to the ether. And then before you'll know to realize it, you'll have little life left to yourself. And the only death remaining will be a physical one. There's this ideal person when it comes to being one who faces the matter at hand. And this kind of person is the type to dislocate a shoulder and then run straight into a brick wall in order to pop it back into place. The let's get this over with kind of people. These types, they get to live more life than the rest of us because they let their affairs live and die as they should. They don't drag it around, gradually getting slower and heavier. They always light on their feet. Mix that steadfast nature with an acute sense for decision making and what you have is a recipe for la dolce vita i didn't finish that story about the king of iran muhammad khan Qajar. okay so two servants back alley rendezvous and alliance was formed on the night of june 17th 1797 as the moon turned the blind eye and the king lay his royal head atop his royal pillow to sleep his royal sleep two figures slithered into his tent two figures and two rusty unwashed kitchen knives the two servants obeyed his king's wishes and stayed completely quiet they crept closer and closer removed the blankets from over the king's head revealing his pale beardless neck and then Telling you right, don't put off till tomorrow. Do what you can do tonight. You get a feeling, a feeling. Why do you think you can outrun these things? Why take a chance on losing something, something real great? Don't put off till tomorrow. Ooh, what you can do.